back to Northwest City Politics in the know with Juanita. We're glad that you're joining us tonight. We're always happy there are people out there like you, people that are interested in what's happening in their cities, because it makes for good government if the residents are involved along with the city council and mayor and the city staff. So we're glad that you're with us and are gonna learn something about issues that I hope are important to you. Now, if you haven't watched our program before, each week we'll have somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to update us on what are the current issues and things that are happening now or will be happening in the future. And then from time to time we'll have some special programs, like now. We're into October, which is election, close to the election on November 6th. So we'll encourage you if you're particularly if you're from Golden Valley, take down the email and the phone number of, of our candidates that are with us tonight. And if they talk about an issue that interests you, get in touch with them. And if you see an issue that interests you and you're not from Golden Valley, then check and see what your cities are doing about it. I'm very happy tonight to welcome at two of the candidates for the city council in Golden Valley. Uh, over on the far side is Andy Johnson and then Kimberly Sandberg. Sandberg. <laughs> I want to make sure I say that right. Yep, absolutely. And so they're both going to be sharing thoughts and ideas with us tonight. And like I said, if you're from Golden Valley, you'll see their phone number and their email pop up. Copy it down. We'll, t we'll start with Kimberly. Sure. And Go, uh, there's lots of different issues that people deal with and I asked you to look over kind of a list of them and maybe pick some that you'd like to talk to our audience out there and kind of explain where you're coming from and what you'd like to see done on those issues. Sure. Uh, so I think one issue that um, is really important for Golden Valley right now is communication. We i have actually heard from a lot of people at the doors that they feel like their voice uh -huh. isn't always heard uh -huh. um, when they reach out to city council, and I think that's a really big problem. Oh, yeah. And I think Golden Valley generally does a pretty good job with communication. Uh -huh. um, we have a lot of open houses about changes that are coming, uh, and we send out postcards if there's going to be a change, for example, in a park. Uh, but you know that's not going to reach everyone right. who wants to know about it. So I think that's something we could do a lot better, uh -huh. is meeting people where they are, having in-person meetings but also doing better with digital communication and just making sure that everyone knows about what's going on in our community right. and having really good opportunities for engagement as well. Right. And then tell our audience a little bit something about yourself and how your life experiences have prepared you to be on your city council. Sure, so I, I've lived in Golden Valley for about six years. My wow. wife and I moved here um, because for the same reasons a lot of people do, mm -hmm. because we have great schools, we have fantastic parks, we have mm -hmm. a really welcoming community. And um, so those are the things that drew us to Golden Valley. And I've served on the Open Space and Recreation Commission for ah. a few years now, and that oversees our parks and right. green spaces. So that's been a really great way to get more involved in the uh -huh. community. And I've also been involved in the Golden Valley Pride Festival since the beginning, and we just had our fourth year Year and over mm. 5,000 attendees. Um, and then something that really got me involved was a few years ago I was looking at our city newsletter and uh -huh. reading an article about our new community center, which is pretty fantastic oh, if you've right, been. Right. Um, and But at the time I was looking at the newsletter and I saw that there was no space planned for kids and families ah. that had been taken off right. and it was no longer in the plan. So I decided to take action uh -huh. and <laughs> I contacted city council <laughs> and my friends who had kids and asked uh -huh. them to do the same. And um, ultimately it worked and now we have the Brookview Backyard Indoor oh, Play right, Area right. at the Brookview Community Center. And it had over 50,000 visitors in the ah. first year. Uh, so I, I was proud to identify that need and take right. the action we needed to you know, make our community a better place. So that's the kind of vision and leadership I would bring right. to council. Oh yeah, because it definitely is important when people see a need that they bring that to the attention of their city council. Exactly, exactly. And I think that there's a lot of opportunity for engagement in Golden uh -huh. Valley, especially a city of our size. Uh, but I do think that council needs to be really proactive about creating those opportunities uh -huh. and letting residents know about them. And what's your personal background? 
Uh, so I actually, I grew up in Texas, uh -huh. and um, my wife is from Minnesota, and so that's why, why we moved to Minnesota, and um, we just love Golden Valley. It's uh -huh. a really fantastic place to uh -huh. live. Um, and after college, I lived in Washington, D.C. for a while mm. and really enjoyed that. And I've worked at nonprofits and small businesses in communications and marketing in my career. Well, that should fit with city council, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think that'll be a really helpful background to have, especially the communications piece, because mm -hmm. you know I've spent my entire professional career thinking about how to better communicate with people. Oh, right. And you know, trying a lot of different things and learning what what what's really effective in communication. Well, like I was saying, city councils want to be in contact with people, and they're kind of going through a change right now in finding more and different ways to contact people. Absolutely, absolutely, and technology has changed so much even in just the past five or ten years it can be hard to keep up but that's oh, yeah. why I think right. it's good to have people on council who have a good grasp of that oh, right. um, so we can you know provide new ideas to the city oh, as well most definitely yeah. now is there some other issue that you'd like to share with people yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there are a lot of really important issues in Golden Valley that fall under the umbrella of having a forward-looking vision for our uh -huh. city. I think we're at kind of a turning point on a lot of issues like affordable housing, uh -huh. environmental sustainability, public transit, economic development. And right now, we as a city really need to be looking to the future and uh -huh. planning for 10, 20, 30 years down the road right. and making sure we're on the right track. So I've, I've talked to a lot of people at the doors about, about transit and housing and the kinds of development that we're having in our community uh -huh. and, and making sure that's what we need and we're on the right track there. Right. So I think having a comprehensive vision that involves all of those things is, is really important for our city. Right, and then transmit, transmitting that vision out to people. Yeah, exactly. Made. Well, and also, you know, getting getting input from the community uh -huh. on that vision and saying, what what do you want to see in Golden right. Valley in 20 years? What do you want to see in 10 years? Right. Um, you know, if your kids, if you have young kids, what what do you need? What do mm -hmm. you need if you've lived in Golden Valley for 50 years? And just making sure all of that all of that feedback is informing that that planning process. Yeah, and your city does have a range of ages. We in do. Your population. Yeah, and I think that's one of the best things about Golden Valley. Mm -hmm. um, we have neighbors who you know have young kids and we have neighbors who are in their 80s and even 90s uh -huh. and I think that's that's great that intergenerational piece of Golden right. Valley. I think that's something that's really special about our community. And then another issue that we can share. Sure. Um, I would also say transit. I ah. know that's that's kind of a hot button topic right, with right. the with the blue line extension, uh, but I also think it goes beyond that, and we should be thinking about things like bus rapid transit. There's been ah. talk of adding some on 55, uh -huh. which I think could be really great, and um, also bike and pedestrian accessibility. Just thinking of transit more broadly in terms uh -huh. of you know beyond cars, what other options can we right. support in our community? And, and that's really important for really all ranges of ages oh, in our community. Um, you know, seniors who don't want to drive anymore, it would be great for them to have other transit options. Young people who don't want to buy a car but want to work at one of the great corporations in oh, our community, right. uh, making sure they can get to work without a car uh, by right. having bike and pedestrian and public transit options right. is important too. And then we wanted to give you an opportunity to tell the viewers out there why they should vote for you come November 5th when they go into the polling booth. Sure. Yeah, so I, I think Golden Valley is a really fantastic place to live, and that's why that's why I live here. I think it's it's fantastic, and um, there are some things we could do to make it even better and to make sure we stay on, on the right track for, for our city. I think we need people on council who have a forward-looking vision for our city on affordable housing and environmental sustainability and all of the pressing issues our community is facing, and, and people who will take action on those issues to make sure we're on the right track. We also need to, to build on our welcoming and inclusive community. Golden Valley has a reputation for being welcoming and inclusive, and we need to make sure that everyone has a seat at the table. And we also need a responsive, transparent government that engages its residents throughout the decision-making process. So that goes beyond just informing them of the changes that are happening and actually asking them at the very beginning of the conversation what they want to see in Golden Valley and using that feedback to inform the decisions that are made and also keeping them engaged throughout the process and letting them know when a decision is made, why it was made, and um, how their feedback impacted that position. So I think that, I think that that's really important in Golden Valley. And, and I will bring to City Council bold vision for, for a city's future and new ideas and also a proven track record of leadership in Golden Valley. Well, thank you very much.
Now we'll shift on to Andy Johnson and we'll let you introduce yourself out to our wider audience, oh. but particularly to the people in Golden Valley. Well, thanks very much, Juanita. I appreciate you uh -huh. having me here tonight. Um, I was just thinking about introductions, and seven years ago, when I was interviewing for the Board of Zoning Appeals in uh -huh. Golden Valley, when I started volunteering um, in my service, um, I had studied up on the Board of Zoning Appeals and the Planning uh -huh. Commission. I thought I had all my details ready to go, and then I was asked a question, what do you like about Golden Valley? And that was not my list of questions <laughs> I answered, so I, I kind of had to think real yeah. quickly, and I thought, well, I, I grew up on the north side of Minneapolis uh -huh. uh, before I went in the Navy, and I thought, what I really liked about Golden Valley and why I chose to live here, one of the reasons was just the beautiful trees and parks, ah, and I right. grew up with that. Right. So uh, then I, I said, you know, another thing I like about Golden Valley is being close to business. I can be close to my favorite uh -huh. sandwich shop, for example. And so the person interview, interviewing me said, so you like trees and subs? <laughs> and I thought, I thought, well, I, I, think, yeah. I hope my slogan has become a little more sophisticated yeah. uh, as I'm running now, but uh, there is some commonality there in that I do like parks, and, uh -huh. but now we call it green space and open right. space, and it's, right. and it's that same feel that makes Golden Valley really mm -hmm. a special place. But also on the, the sub side, the business side, is that whole feeling of community with industry and commerce, and mm -hmm. I think it makes Golden Valley a very special place to live right. and work and serve, because it's, it's a very interesting and unique story, and mm -hmm. it's been, it's, the city has had a lot of sustained growth through the, through the years. And then we'll switch over to issues and uh, let you start with whatever first issue you want to share with our audience tonight. Sure. My first issue is, is very similar to the first one we talked about tonight. And when I thought about running, I, I thought about some issues that are important. And my, my slogan is, let's connect. Uh -huh. And I thought there's, there's three pieces to that. Um, and the first is communication. And I say that because of my experience in seven years, two on the Board of Zoning Appeals and five with the Planning Commission. Right. There's a, there's a lot of important things we're talking about, mm -hmm. and the Board of Zoning Appeals is really talking about where the rules don't fit and how ah. you manage exceptions and right. how you do that fairly and consistently. And the Planning Commission is just the opposite. The Planning Commission is all about how do you create a rule so that you minimize your exceptions. Ah. So in the course of learning and mm -hmm. contributing and, and reading the endless documents we have, and you know, this Planning Commission is essentially a, it's kind of a quasi judicial or the legislative oh, body yeah. and that it involves it's 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 designed by statute you know we're public officials and there's just a lot to understand and read that's that's legalese and ordinances and land right. uses and there's a lot of formalities there and so one of the things i noticed is that it's hard to notice for our meetings is that there's not a lot of people there ah. and we don't get a lot of emails occasionally we do with someone uh -huh. about an important issue and so i just got to thinking about well how do we how do we connect? How do we right. literally connect with people? And the city really does a fantastic job of informing people in a variety of medium. Um, and I'm an IT person, so I'm all you know. I'm always about right. the web and the mobile and the, you know, the different platforms and snail mail or whatever it takes. But I, I do think it's time to take another step and, and really advance our game. And I think about it like, whenever you look at a newspaper, people don't just dive into an article. They yeah. look at a headline. And we do that to somewhat, but for the real important issues that are, are in front of boarding zoning appeals, that those really drive a lot of concern. And the Planning Commission talks about a lot of things that are deep into the future, such as our mixed use planning, oh, right. land use, and the, the new strategies and the comprehensive plan. And those things people care about, but they're busy with their lives and they, they just believe government's gonna take care of them and, and represent right. them. And some, but sometimes it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. And that's when they are concerned about things. So I thought, how can we do that? And I, uh -huh. I think a couple of things we could do are maybe more tailor our message in a way that's going to be uh, more of a headline to people. Uh -huh. Or perhaps, yeah. you know, after a meeting's conducted, we send out the minutes dutifully, mm -hmm. and they're quite lengthy to go through. And it's sometimes hard to get the gist of what the yeah. meeting was. So, so maybe the chairs of the committee should, you know, maybe write a little paragraph saying, hey, this is why I think it's important. Uh -huh. This is what you should read. And, and more than just... Um, I don't think it's going to take, a, it'll take time, but not necessarily a lot of money. Right. And, and being in IT, I'm, I'm very for pilots and experiments, uh -huh. and, and let's get groups together and see how we can, how we can literally connect. So I think my first uh, mission would be, how do, we, how do we get that feedback? The better feedback we get, the more ideas we can oh, think right. about. Right. And you know, one of my skills that I do fairly often, almost every day, as an IT manager is getting those opinions, pros and cons, mm -hmm. and trying to make the best decisions then looking at the inputs, getting the alternatives together and the options, and really moving forward on that. Because 
uh, there's people in this community who really, really care. Occasionally, oh, you know, yes. uh, door knocking, people say, hey, I think everything's fine, and yeah. they go back to what they're doing. But a lot of people have things to say as well, yeah. and I wonder if we can target them and, and give them substance and, and content. You know, how much, how can we improve that? That would be a big plus for it, and I think oh, we'd, we'd that really would benefit. Be, that would be, because people often have ideas that would be helpful, but if you don't go out and solicit them, you won't hear what they exactly. are. Exactly. Exactly. Do you have any ideas of ways that could be done? Well, I, I just mentioned a couple. I was uh -huh. thinking that, you know, there's we, we do send out a, a an agenda, right. but maybe we could send out a pre-agenda, or maybe we could send out something that says, hey, m maybe in the form of a question. Everybody likes puzzles. Yeah. So, you know, for instance, when we were working on the mixed-use zoning district, uh -huh. what if we said something like, hey, do you know that there could be potentially a six-story building on the corner of, of Douglas Drive yeah. and Duluth Street? That might get people saying, yeah. well, that, I'm <laughs> glad I like that, or I want to learn <laughs> right, more. Right. Um, so we don't want to shock our citizens, but no. that's the reality. And oh, how, right. do we get, how do we garner that attention to get their input? Even if they show up, great. If they want to send an email, that's great, too. But how do we, how do we really engage them? Right, right. Uh, yeah, that's a, a question right of this time, I think. Certainly. Everybody struggles with it. Um, I was even looking at the, one of the minutes from the Rising Tides Task Force, and they had the same, same question, the mm -hmm. same concerns of how do we reach out to these people right. that, we're, that we're trying to engage? How do we how do, we do that? So it's, it's, it's pretty common, and it, it seems like when there's a, a decent number of people who are saying the same thing, that probably means there's, there's a need. Yeah, it, the people talking represent people that aren't talking out there, but are yeah. also concerned about the same issue. Yeah, I think so. There's, and, and the other part of that is, it's up to the citizens to be engaged, to, to oh, look for right. these things. It's right. not, uh, one thing I've learned very, very quickly is when, when a resident says, well, the city should do this. <laughs> well, they are the city, you yeah, know? And you so are. <laughs> it does work both ways. And yeah, we, it does. We, we need to emphasize that as well, that it's right. not that the city should be serving everything up. It, we all need to, to, to take a couple steps mm -hmm. in the same direction mm -hmm. and, uh, and engage a little better. Definitely. And another issue that you've thought about. Another issue I've thought about is how do we, how do we fund things that we want to uh, benefit our community? And you know, I think it's a perennial story that cities always are looking for funds. Uh -huh. Everybody, every family is, every company is, every government is. Um, but there's one thing that the city of Golden Valley does that I think they should stop doing so, a, so we can fund these needed, uh, whether it's an infrastructure item, whether uh -huh. it's a park item, whether it's a, a new civic adventure, whether it's an experiment. Um, one way we could do that is to stop the use of tax increment financing. Uh -huh. Uh, Golden Valley, as I, as I said with my, with my uh, trees and subs comment, right. uh, Golden Valley is a, just a remarkable piece of land mm -hmm. with a remarkable economy, a little microeconomy. And to discount the value of our land by subsidizing or deferring taxes uh -huh. for up to, t up to 15 years, oh, yeah. uh, that is amount of money that we could probably spend uh, better on our, on our city. Um, I, as, a, as a business person myself, I know that there's always options, there's always alternatives. Right. And when I was on the Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, we strove to be consistent. And we would start every meeting by telling the people, the, the applicants, what the process was. Right. And I think it's the same way with, with obeying the same kind of process of what are our priorities, where do we want to spend our money, uh -huh. and where there's $10 million worth of taxes that we've deferred for, for, for new development. Oh, right. And maybe the businesses could have had another option there. And there's, there's great arguments back and forth for TIF. Right. I mean, it's, it, I'm, I'm particularly against it. But I think when you look at the pros and cons and the options, uh, I, I, would, I would argue and I would, I would uh, propose that there's a better use for that $10 million uh -huh. to benefit the people of Golden Valley on some projects they wanted that have had to be deferred for years. Right. So I think that it, there's nothing that I can do in the past, and I'm not here to pass judgment right. on anybody for right. what they did. Uh, I think it's important that we really put that money to work in the community um, for whatever the majority thinks we do or whatever that we get the most input on or whatever great ideas to right. come up. But it's always great to have that option of, of having additional funds. And I think that's one way that we can capture that. Well, and the whole issue of, of tax increment financing was to bring jobs where people were lacking jobs. 
And the whole process has made little ch little twists and turns along the way until it, what is, mm -hmm. till it is what it is today. And I could make arguments pro and con. I think that's important. I'm, I'm not sitting here saying that there's nothing good about uh -huh. TIF. Right. Um, TIF does have benefits. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think that, the, I, I believe that those benefits could be obtained without TIF. Uh -huh. And that's the trick because nobody has a crystal ball. Right. Um, right. However, mm -hmm. my, my focus is on let's look at the needs we have right now in the community, whether it's more street lights, uh -huh. whether it's more be benches in the park or a better baseball diamond. You know, those are needs that have existed for some time. Right. And why don't we uh, take a look and prioritize that over a new development? Well, it definitely is an issue that needs discussion, right? Yes, indeed. And, and I think we should have that discussion. Right. Okay, and we'll switch gears and take another issue that you'd like to deal with. Uh, it's not really an issue so much, but uh, I think it's worth talking about our new um, a zoning plan for the mixed use okay. district because on the planning commission it's it's really important the work that's done on what the future is going to look like how do we adapt to changing needs of our residents and uh -huh. changing needs of our businesses and changing needs of developers so it, it it's a process and it's a long process and it's sometimes it's really grueling mm -hmm. uh, but that's what i signed up for that's what all the people on the planning commission right. signed up for and that's that's why we really want that community input but what we've done over a series of meetings, a series of months, and working with the city staff who really does a super job in preparing and researching things is to set up these mixed use districts throughout the city. There's about a dozen. Uh -huh. And they're designed to adapt to the changing needs of residents and businesses by instead of having a, an area that has a building for this function and a building for that function, it's a building that combines multiple functions. So you could have an apartment building with affordable housing, with restaurants, I've knocked on countless doors of people saying, I want more restaurants, uh -huh. I, want a, oh, I want a grocery right, store. Right. Um, those kind of things could actually uh -huh. happen. And if we get those approved, which I anticipate we will, we've had great feedback from the city council, then the next step is to really aggressively market that and promote that within the metro area and, and see if we can get that kind of new development, which is going to spur growth and adapt to those changes and still keep the character of the city. Right. Now, have you tell the people out in our audience why they should vote for you if they're in Golden Valley and are voting on election day? I'd be happy to. Uh, thanks. You know, I have a service-oriented mindset, and I've worked in IT for the past 20 years, and that's all about, and I work in software, and I work in highly regulated industries, so I understand the difficulties and the challenges of moving quickly uh, with a lot of coordination and community input all the names of regulation and moving ahead. So that service oriented mindset is all about getting people together, pros and cons, looking at the options up and down, and from there, assessing the situation and creating a positive plan. So I expect that as I'm elected to the city council, I'll adopt that same service oriented mindset <coughs> is to include people in the planning and include people in the decision making, and most importantly, include them in the implementation. Um, but most importantly, with the service-oriented mindset, it's about helping people with a transition as change happens. And in the city council, I believe that with my background of highly regulated industries, moving quickly, adapting to change, putting together plans, and getting the right people with the right ideas, agreeing on the right steps to move forward, uh, that's a real positive step for the city to recognize all those inputs coming together in a plan that can get us moving. Thanks. And with respect to my military background, I was a naval officer for 10 years. And in the Navy, I learned such things as you know, discipline and integrity and selflessness. And I intend to apply that to the city council as well. I believe in simple things like respect, decency, spend wisely, be fair, be consistent, and be reliable. And I intend to honor all those commitments to you if you vote for Andy Johnson on November 5th. Thank you. And then we're always encouraging people to get involved and running for the city council is like an ultimate right in getting involved maybe you could each mention something a little bit about <clears throat> door knocking to people so that people out there will have a better feel for it and maybe somebody else will get interested in getting running for the city council why don't we start with you 
Sure. So, I mean, I think I've talked to a lot of people when I'm door knocking about a lot of different issues that are uh -huh. really important to them. Um, and so there are a lot of ways to get involved in Golden Valley beyond, you know, running for office. Oh, and I yes. would encourage people to look at all of our different commissions and task forces. Those can be a really good way to have your voice heard and to serve in a really important role in our community Definitely. And, and to get involved early on in some of these decisions and really, you know, have a have a way to let the city know where you stand right. and um, to just be really engaged in the community and kind of understand a little bit more about how government works from sort of the inside or right. you know a, a little bit of a different perspective. So right. I think it, I think it's so important to to get involved in the city and to serve the city if if you can and you're interested. So I would absolutely encourage people to do that. Okay, something that you might have learned from door knocking. Well, one thing I've learned is that we might want to think of changing the name of the city to Golden Lab Valley or <laughs> Golden Doodle Valley. I've never seen so many dogs. Uh, it's crazy. Um, there's some funny things. Um, I recognize it's it's uh, it's interesting, but a lot of people talk about incumbents, uh -huh. so that's kind of a freebie. Um, <laughs> hopefully, it won't be uh, in four years. Uh, but there's talk about that. But there, a lot of people have concerns about safety. Uh -huh. um, some streets are dark and some streets are fast. Oh, yeah. So like, why not have more street lights on Winnetka? And what about uh, speed on Ridgeway or the, the South Winnetka, Winnetka Avenue South Speedway, I think uh -huh. somebody called it. Um, some you know, car theft. But there's right. a lot of talk about uh, those basic street issues. Um, and I've also heard people mention uh, things about taxes, of course, taxes oh, are going sure. up. Um, and when I mention TIF to them, they, they're concerned about it. So that yeah. kind of speaks to the whole communication issue and how much people are, are trying to be informed or right. are being informed effectively. Um, and I think maybe another couple of things that have come up are um, just looking at parks and maybe uh, the quality of ball fields for their kids. And, um, but for people that, uh, that, I, that, that I ask about, you know, how you think about programs, uh, they're widely used. I mean, they're, they're really supportive of, especially like the senior ah. programs. They, uh, those are really well respected ah. and well run, and uh, they think they're terrific. Mm -hmm. So we'll encourage people out there to think of maybe another you You might want to run for your city council. I want to thank both of you for taking time out of your busy schedules and sharing your thoughts and ideas with our audience out there. And then we want to encourage everybody in the audience, no matter what city you have, on November 5th that you do take the time to vote you might not have, in some cities, you might not have any issues to vote on, but there are a number of cities and there are a number of school boards where it does need people to turn out and vote. And it's a basic thing that needs to get done. If you're not sure whether you're registered to vote, go to the Minnesota Secretary of State site because you can plug in and find out if you're registered or not. You can register on the, the Secretary of State site. You can also get a copy of what your ballot might be. So we'll encourage all of you to be sure to take the time on Tuesday, November 5th to vote and take time to contact candidates and check out what they're thinking with what you're thinking and learn more about the whole process. Thank you.